Welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to talk about how to make money from photography. So like I've just said, basically today we're going to cover how to make money in photography and this is an enormous topic once more, just like the previous video on how to become a professional photographer, which I will link above. But this one is slightly different because we're going to focus on essentially how you make the dollar and this is going to be mainly focused on people who are portrait photographers and that doesn't matter if you photograph dogs, horses, people, families, kids, babies, newborns, it doesn't matter. Uh, anything within the portrait sitting range. And as you can see, I have a slight array of stuff with me here today and um, I'm just gonna talk you through a few things. So with me, I have this box which contains the last 10 years of business things in it, right from my very, very, very first priceless. And I also have a few other things I want to touch on. So it's really difficult to know where to begin with this. It's not going to be a massively long video and this is going to essentially form more of an introduction and a few tips rather than a process recipe thing that you can follow to get you from A to B. Now the full A to B, I am actually going to be releasing a new workshop which you can sign up for anytime from Tuesday of next week and that workshop is essentially an online in-person sales workshop to give you every single thing you need to be able to make the most profit from your sessions as physically possible. So for uh, today's purposes, I want to start right at the beginning. So a lot of the people that are watching this won't be people who are up to speed on marketing and things like business. So, but when it comes to marketing, there is um, a few different models that we can implement to make this seem a little bit more like it makes sense. So the one we're going to look at today is an extrapolation on something that you guys may be aware of, which is the four P's. So we're going to look today at the seven P's because um, if you can get all of the seven P's right, then you are on to a winner. So the four P's are kind of like the foundation to the seven P's um, and they include price, product, promotion and placement. Um, those four are kind of like the basic essentials. So we're gonna cover price and product in this video today. Um, promotion and placement are slightly different because that's actually how you put across your portrait services to the world. Now the other three of the seven Ps, so we've just done four, we've got another three to make it seven, are in my opinion, potentially some of the most important ones and they are people, process and physical proof. So it's like physical proof proof of your ability and those are so so important so the seven p's come together and essentially give you what the, the general industry terms a marketing mix and uh, how you prioritize certain ones makes a big difference but you have to make decisions on every single one okay so let's start with uh let's start with people so that is you that is you as a person and anybody you work with so you want to make sure that you are the best version of yourself that will appeal to your target market so there are certain people who are brilliant with working with families and often they they actually have families themselves and that means that there's a lot of relatable elements dog photographers tend to get on really good with owners um, of dogs if they have dogs themselves. So that is another thing that we've got similarities with. That's uh, more to do with the people side of things rather than anything else. Let's look at the next one of my additional three, which is physical evidence proof. <laughs> you put a word after it and it makes a lot more sense than physical. So physical proof is something that I um, definitely suggest to a lot of photographers, especially if they're, they've got all of the rest of their mix nailed and they're just kind of they've got a missing piece and the missing piece often is physical evidence or physical proof. Now that is things like, uh, like this. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this super clearly, but this is a qualification certificate from the Guild. That is a piece of physical proof. In this black book, which is my whole life's record of achievement, you have a number of different areas of physical proof. So within this folder, I have my actual qualifications for things like a degree and stuff, not that I went to uni. 
um, but also in here we have a few things like press clippings so there's quite a lot of press clippings in here and there is also my uh, master photographer association qualification back from 2014 there are um, evidence of other press I'm just going to fold that over because can't have that circulating. Um, I have lots of press cuttings up here and some more down below. So there is a lot of different areas of physical proof in here. And the more as you add a new one, you have got another piece of physical proof. It is a good idea to have all of these things up either on your website or your studio wall, depending on if you have a premises or not. So this certificate will drop into this folder soon. And all of these will then be scanned or photographed or downloaded if this is a digital version and used within my marketing. That is physical evidence. It is worth getting. If you can join some of these associations, you know, the MPA is good, SCBPP is good, SOP is good. All of these different ones will help you out. And if you can get qualified through them, then that is brilliant. It's worth doing. With that out the way, let's move on to a couple of the others. So right now we're crossing into a line where all of the other P's can be done with one thing. We need to just discuss IPS. I've mentioned it before in a previous video. IPS stands for in-person sales sessions and in-person sales sessions are essentially the exact opposite of an online gallery when it comes to how to sell your photography from portrait sessions. It is a little bit more effort, but with great effort comes great reward. I was doing online galleries after sessions with in-home studio, so that's how I was operating at the time. And um, I would put all of these images up onto the online gallery for the client to look at, and the sale would maybe be a print or a digital or a couple of either of those variations. They would usually just buy the digital and often would get the images done themselves usually as canvases. Now that meant that my average sale per session was very, very, very low. But within the region of probably, I don't know, 50 to 150 pounds, I would say, with the vast majority of them. Now that is not a sustainable income, especially not if you're going to be using some of the quite in-depth editing methods that, are, that I have on my channel here. It was not good for me, so I spent a lot of time learning the ins and outs of in-person sales sessions and I muddled my way through my first in-person sales session after I'd already been paid the session fee anyway and after the in-person sales session my first ever one uh, that was uh, a £250 sale I think on that one then my next in-person sales session was a £350 sale and then my next one was a £400 sale and then I think the next one after that was actually of a human child not a pet that was my first sale that crossed the £1,000 mark. So that is something that I was amazed at and I just felt like I'd hit the jackpot and Jesus Christ, this could actually be a business for me. From that point on, I have never looked back. I have never done a gallery sale ever since when it comes to portrait sessions. So let's look at the most important thing probably about your in-person sales session and that is product. So that's one of our P's. Now I uh, use a lab called Digital Lab who are based in the UK and they are a really great team and they do brilliant products. So my products, like I've mentioned, are from Digital Lab and they are absolutely stunning. I have these products for a very specific reason. So the main thing to note about products for your in-person sales sessions is that they should be things that the client can't find themselves. That means using a professional lab where possible and using things like for prints, different papers that they can't get themselves. You wouldn't print on a paper that is like a floppy back print that they can get from Tesco. If you don't know what Tesco is, it is a supermarket here in the UK. Um, you can go and get prints from all these places and I would recommend making sure that whatever you print on is different to things that the client can do themselves. So the main uh, product that usually clients will print for themselves if they want something for the wall is a canvas and therefore I have specifically a framed canvas which means that the client can't get that themselves and there is a shadow gap. There is a shadow gap around every single one of my products and the canvas is no different. So the canvas image is um, just like it would be on a normal wall canvas it's wrapped around a block and the frame on it is deep and chunky it looks great on a wall and it's something the client can't do themselves the next product for me is uh, definitely going to be the acrylic so I like to have a acrylic in stock which is brilliant for uh, more contemporary or modern clients again I tend to have these framed because I just think that they look 
exquisite and definitely finished off and polished. So I also have a acrylic on offer. Sometimes I'll also have an aluminium. I don't have an aluminium with me at the moment, but there's one coming soon. So check out Instagram stories because it will be there. So um, for my acrylic, again, Shadow Gap involved in that. It's a beautiful piece. And finally, for those who would like a traditionally framed image, I personally don't do traditional really at all and therefore I do a framed fine art so this is a framed fine art print again a shadow gap around the edge this one particularly has a deckled edge which means it's hand torn down the edges it means that the white around it kind of acts as an additional subframe to it because the the shadow gap in between is black but when you order it you don't have to have the deckled edge you can have a straight cut edge if you want to this is um, essentially gives it the look of it floating out of the wall and it is absolutely stunning it looks incredible absolutely incredible so that is the products covered make sure that they're different if you're selling digitals they should be on a usb not transferred via cloud storage or we transfer they should be on a beautifully packaged usb i will include some images of usbs and usb delivery packaging options into the video now so that you guys can see what I mean. This again means that it's something the client didn't expect. You've one upped what their expectations were and all of these things like the products that are here today are things that will add perceived value to the client and therefore your prices are far more justified when you add on your profit margin because they'll know how much a canvas costs from Tesco. So with the products done, it then comes to the next P, which is pricing. So like I mentioned, I do have my price list, so bear with. So here are my price lists from 2012 to 2014. So I have multiple different price lists, which show my progression as a photographer because the prices go up on every single one. So for example, uh, you will be able to see if you looked at these, the price list is laid out in a very specific way. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly or not, but um, the left hand column is always collections and the right hand column is always a la carte. So the right hand column um, always has at least three different collections on it. The order of the item should go from most expensive to least expensive on both sides. So all of your a la carte should be split out nicely and go from most expensive to least expensive. When it comes to your packages, there is a difference. So you should be pricing your a la carte items at least like a substantial amount more than what they would be put into a package so that there is a decent amount of difference that funnels people into packages, which helps you out because you will have clustered them in a way to make a specific profit margin. So the lowest collection on your package list should be the lowest amount of profit that you are able to take home from the session to make sure that you make ends meet and cover all of your cost of doing business, cost of living and cost of goods sold. The top package should be slightly ridiculous, i.e. you should look at that and think who is going to buy that because that's far too much money. So if someone ever does buy it, you're like, wow, that was amazing, happy days. But if they don't buy, it's not the end of the world because your next packages down are already great for you because they're well above your base amount of money that you wanna take home from a session. That is very basic, basic, basic bits of pricing psychology. There are so much more to it, but not today because we just don't have the time. So that is the uh, products and the pricing done. We've already done physical evidence people promotion and placement like I've said are all to do with marketing so that leaves us with one left and that one left is process which is the in-person sales process itself the in-person sales process starts at the time that the client makes an inquiry for a booking and at that point they should see the price list then after that everything happens in a very structured order to get to the end point which is actually after the delivery of the product whether you ask the client to give you a review or a testimonial which helps with future marketing so there is a very detailed I think it's a 16 step process and uh, essentially what that does is that funnels the client into a uh, process where they feel comfortable you feel comfortable no one is selling anything all you're doing is helping your client come to a decision and within that process at some point you are going to have to show the client your samples now there is a reason like I've said that I have the same image on all of my samples and that is to make sure that you have removed any bias from the selection process they should be looking at samples which should ideally all be the same same size so it's the same image size in all of these and they should see the same uh, sized items usually because it helps to just limit what they're picking from so they've picked their images 
then they pick their product to finish, which one would they like? And in this kind of a size sample, they can hold them, they can look at them, they can even hold two at the same time and compare which one they would like to go for. So when they have gone through the products and selected which ones they actually want to go for, then they need to select the sizes. I am aware that it's expensive to buy loads of samples in loads of sizes. So there is a solution, it's tried and tested. I've done it, works really well, never had a problem. And to do that, you're gonna need one of these. This is an A1 art folio, which you can get from any art supplies store locally probably to you and within this A1 art folio are some foam boards. So the foam board comes in again A1 size and with your A1 foam boards you then want to go ahead and cut them down to your product sizes. So I usually have a 20 by 16 and 20 by 30 panel. Um, in this situation on my current prices I actually have a 24 by 16 and a 20 by 30 panel size. So I have got both of those cut out. Now with your A1 board I would suggest marking it very carefully once you've measured with a tape measure with a ruler and a pencil and then go ahead and cut down the edges very carefully with a very sharp knife with protection on top of the surface that you're working on. Do not do this if you are a child. Do not do this on supervised if you don't have a steady hand. Please be very careful. But once you have cut down all of your your foam boards to size, you will be left with individual items that are a certain size. So this is a 24 by 16 piece of foam board. And what that does is that means you can put it with glue dots or just hold it up against the client's wall they can see how big that is on their wall and in their home, or they can see how big it is just in person. Because if I said to you, I'm gonna get you a 20 by 30 panel, is that okay? They're gonna be like, what, inches, centimeters? How big is that? Is that this big? Is it this big? Well, actually, it's this big. This is 20 by 30. So they can get a really good feel for how big a piece of work is. So your client can pick the images that they want, the products that they want, the size that they want, whilst they can see everything that's involved in the process. And when you finish off the process nicely and really well, and without actually forcing the client to get anything, because I detest pushy salespeople, like don't do that guys, because I would not buy from you if you're a pushy salesperson. And then you will end up with a great value sale. The customer feels like they've been taken care of. You've talked them through all of this, all of the maze that is through to the sale. And by the end of it, they've got exactly what they wanted from it and they will come back for more. So most of my clients are repeat customers. And there is a reason for that because this process damn works. If you are still like, what on earth does the actual process entail? Then guys, I can't cover that in a YouTube video. It's too long. So either, you know, hit me up for a online one-to-one -one or, join our online in-person sales workshop, which will be launching very, very soon. I just wanna say thanks a lot to my wonderful, wonderful product suppliers, Digital Lab. Digital Lab have just been absolutely incredible for me this year. They've helped with my award prints, which ended up being really expensive because I ended up having a lot of images go through to the print final, so I couldn't thank them enough. They have sent sample after sample after test after test back to me to make sure that I am really happy with it and I know that they take a great amount of care in their customers and their printing. So I just couldn't thank them enough and I feel absolutely confident to recommend them to everybody, which I already do. So, you know, if you're new to the print world, especially if you're in the UK, get in touch with them and they will help you out. I've just got no bad words to say about them. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I know that this was very kind of rushed and there is loads that I am gonna have to cut out because the editing is just gonna be awful. It's gonna be so long. So if you feel like I've left loads of gaps in this, then I'm sorry, but I don't don't want to be putting out super long YouTube videos. It is worth looking at this in more detail. It is worth looking at all of the options because I've gone through the kind of starter option today and there are multiple different options available depending on the budget that you have to invest in this process. Just one quick thing to mention, I mentioned about the price list, make sure you order everything left to right. So the packages are on the left and the a la carte is on the right. Switch that round if you're in a country that reads right to left. 
So for example, if your country native language, for example, is Arabic, you need to have your prices the other way around, not left to right. It should be right to left. That's all I want to cover with you guys today. So if you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every weekend, sometimes more than if I feel like it. And I really hope that this video has been enlightening for you, if nothing else. Thanks so much for watching again. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all again really, really soon.